All right, so this week we wanted to talk a little bit about size ups and the 360 and the relationship between the two. Now, years ago when 360s weren't really a popular thing, the size up was really important because it was your chance to get a description of the, the incident and the situation out on the radio. And so, you know, pretty much because that was close to the only radio transmission made about conditions, it was really important that you nailed it um, in terms of a description of the scene and what you had. So now that the 360 has rightfully become more integrated into most fire departments daily operations, you kind of got to look at it is that you really have two opportunities, at least initially, to paint the picture for what's going on on the incident scene, right? So no matter what type of vehicle you're arriving in, whether it's a chief's vehicle or any kind of fire apparatus, a th it, the, your initial size up report is going to be fairly limited in its view because you're going to see, you may see, you know, maybe up to three sides of the building, right? You know, Delta, Alpha, Bravo, as you approach the scene, but you're going to be doing it from a limited perspective, from inside of the cab, constrained by that windshield, and it's just kind of hard to see everything. So I think it's kind of important that we look at the size up as kind of painting the initial conditions and the 360 as really kind of honing in on what we have and how we're going to adjust our operational plans. So the main things that I'm looking for in an on-scene report, and every fire department has its own tweaks to this, is a description of a corrected address, if the address that you're arriving at is different from where you were dispatched to, a description of the building, and principally what height the building is, number of stories, and the type of occupancy. Is it a house or a single family dwelling? Uh, or is it an apartment building? Or is it a business? If it's a commercial building, I do not like using the term commercial building as term as part of the size up. I wouldn't be a fan of saying I got a one story commercial building. Hey, I'm on the scene confirming hey, sir, one really? story medium size commercial auto shop. We have moderate from the roof. You can show me as well. Hey, do you have me up? I would much rather know I got a one story warehouse, I got a one story auto body shop, I got a one story grocery store. I would much rather refer to it by the type of business because that gives me a much better idea of what the fire loading is, what the layout of the building is, and what some of the hazards that I might deal with is. Commercial building could mean anything, right? But so I want my height of the building, what type of building it is, and then a general description of conditions and where those conditions are showing from. Fire showing, alpha side, second floor, that kind of example. So here, an example like that might be something like this. I want to see, I got one story manufactured home with heavy fire showing from the Alpha Trolley yeah. side. I'll have the command go ahead up and work Your destination is on your right. Arrived. Copy, Chief 50 on the scene, heavy fire showing. Chief 50 establish command, you know, great work at fire 12 10. <laughs> So our 360, it, it's imperative that our 360 be done early in the incident. And the, when we're doing the 360, now you're out of the apparatus and you have a chance to move around the building and really kind of see what we're going on. And, and you should kind of look at this as kind of like your free opportunity to correct or amend your initial size up report. So the things that we're looking for in our 360 are going to be changes to the building's configuration, and, and that's going to inc include the presence or absence of a basement or crawl space, but it might also include things like a bump out, or you might have a building that looks small from the front, but it's actually very long and large once you look at it from the, from the rear or things like that. We're gonna look at, of course, changes to our conditions and where those conditions are located. Smoke and fire and what side it's coming from and what floor it's coming from and then changes to our actions. So the changes to configuration thing is really important because that can really impact the decision-making of other companies. For example, when you find a long bump out on the rear and that's where the fire is located, that might tell an engine company that they need a longer attack line than they thought they needed. Or when you go in the rear of the building and the house is sitting on a grade and you go from one story in the front to two stories in the rear, that might tell the truck company they need longer ladders than they thought about. So that configuration stuff is really important in helping the others that haven't arrived on scene yet select their best tactical action, right? Years ago, a lot of fire departments would put their mode declaration, offensive, defensive, or whatever, in the on-scene report. Uh, I would advocate against that these days because, again, that on-scene report is being, is being given with limited information. Once you've done your 360 and you really see what's going on, 
that's when I think we should make our mode declaration of offensive or defensive. So that's going to be included in there. And we're also going to include anything else as it relates to action. The three things that we're principally looking at in terms of action is going to involve placement of attack lines, where we're doing our searches in terms of where we're going to prioritize doing our searches and where and what kind of ventilation priority we're going to have. Those are going to be the three primary action things that we're looking at. So in this video here, you see me arriving uh, as the first unit on scene at a working house fire. You hear my initial on scene report containing some of the limited information that we just talked about. And then you hear me doing my 360. A lot of times as a chief officer, I'm not going to get out of the vehicle and do my own 360 if the other companies are arriving on scene. I like the company officers to do their 360 because I think it gets them more actionable and useful information for them. And we talk about that a lot in our size up and command class. You can get some more information about that at the link up here, right? But because at this scene, there were no companies around the corner, I elected to get out and do a 360. And you can hear some of the contents of what I'm saying uh, in this video here. One surrender, sitting on a uh, cross face, cross face is clear. It's going to be heavy fire in the center. Your support company is going to have a VES opportunity on the Delta and Bravo end. You'll notice that one of the things I kind of talk about in there is a targeted VES opportunity. And that's a good example of the kind of action oriented information that we're looking to get out of this size up. In this case, me telling me one of the latter companies that you're gonna have a good VES opportunity in this area. So that's just some, some quick information on the relationship of that size up and 360. For more on this, check out our first in size up uh, and radio reports program. You can find more information of that at the link up here. So for more training tips and videos, make sure you check out our other videos, make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for more.